Hey guys, Spud here, and today we're taking a look at the easiest, simplest, and actually most accurate way to perform an in-flight INS update while flying the DCS F4E Phantom II. INS, or inertial navigation systems, and especially the early ones like the one installed in our F4E, are not perfect and their accuracy will drift over time as the system makes dead reckoning errors due to gyroscopic precession, changes in magnetic variation, hard maneuvering, and a host of other factors that makes these errors compound worse and worse throughout a flight. Thus, we need to update the INS of our Phantom by flying over a known location in space and time called a fix in order to cancel out these errors and realign our INS with our aircraft's true position right over the top of the fix. This is going to be extra important when flying long missions on maps at higher latitudes or very low latitudes that are usually shrouded in bad weather and low visibility conditions such as the Kola and Cold War Germany maps. So let's jump in and get started here. Okay guys, we'll start off our tutorial here in Mission Editor. And we can see we have the basics of a flight plan for a very long range strike from Andoya Airfield all the way to Severomorsk 1 Airfield just outside of Murmansk. And because we have such a long range mission today and we're so far high up north in the very high latitudes, we are definitely going to have to make a few INS updates in this mission in order to navigate accurately and find our Marshall Point, our tanker tracks, our target, and of course, most importantly, our home plate so we can make a safe landing back home at the end of the mission. Now, historically, most DCS World players, including myself, have used geographical reference points as their fixes for updating the INS of their F4E Phantom, whether it be a lake like we have here in our example, or say a very prominent mountaintop, or a very obvious, you know, bend in a river, or a bridge, or a city, things of that nature. However, a much better and more accurate way to do it is to actually bring your fix point to a tack hand station. Whether that's a custom tack hand station you've placed on the map, or a station that is already inherent to the map itself, like the one here at Banach Airfield. And you want to zoom in your mission editor as far as you can and place your actual INS waypoint that you're placing on the map here as close to the center of that tack hand station as you possibly can to get as accurate of a fix as possible. Now, the reason why we want to use a tack hand instead of a geographical reference point, if we have a tack hand station available, is we can use this tack hand station in all weather conditions. If we have an undercast, if we have low visibility, it doesn't matter. We'll still be able to navigate to that station and fly directly right over the top of that as accurately as possible, no matter what the weather is. As well as, of course, it's uh, much easier to just find and fly right to a tack hand station using the HSI in our F4 especially when we're flying in a very large, complex mission where we're having to talk on the radio, fly our jet, uh, set up weapon systems, navigate, all this kind of really intricate stuff that is maybe creating a helmet fire, and so looking outside and trying to find that one little particular lake or that one particular mountain, and then flying directly over the top of it at high altitude can be a bit tricky, and so you might not get the most accurate INS fix or the most accurate INS update out of that method. Whereas you can fly directly right over the top of a tack hand station, no problem, every single time, with a very minimal amount of effort, kind of reducing one factor that's adding to your helmet fire. So let's jump into the cockpit and show you guys what this is gonna look like in the cockpit of our Phantom 2. 
Okay guys, before we get started with our in-cockpit demo today, a little disclaimer, because we're utilizing an air start for our demonstration today, we won't have induced as much drift into our INS system as a super long flight. So when we actually update the INS, you probably won't see much of a difference in terms of its accuracy. However, once you're actually doing it for real out in a real live mission, you'll definitely notice a huge difference when you actually perform an in-flight update. So just want to let you guys know that. And another quick thing, it's incredibly important to ensure you have as little INS drift as possible when using systems like the Pave Spike Pod to drop LGBs in your F4, so that way you can have as stable of a pod as possible and be able to slave that pod onto targets as quickly and effectively as possible. So let's jump in the cockpit and get started. Alright guys, we're back in the office of our F4E. And I think you guys are going to find this technique for doing an INS update so much easier than trying to locate and memorize the location of a lake or a mountain or a bend of a river and then having to fly precisely directly right over the top of it. And you can use this technique in all weather conditions, including low visibility situations such as this undercast layer that we've got here that uh, will prevent us from actually seeing the point on the ground that we're using as our fix today. So the first thing we need to do is to set up the INS system in our backseat for the INS update. And we can do this with both Jester or a human Wizzo. Today we're going to be using Jester because that's what most of you guys out there are going to be using. So we'll go ahead and open up the Jester wheel here. We'll go to the navigation uh, section. We'll go to the edit flight plan, plan subsection. We're going to edit our primary flight plan, and then we're going to choose the waypoint that we place directly on top of our TACAN station in the mission editor. And that's going to be waypoint 2 for us today. We're then going to designate that waypoint as a new type of waypoint, and we're going to call it a nav fix Roger. waypoint. We'll then go back a couple of submenus, and we're going to tell Jester to load that waypoint into our INS as the de destination waypoint right, right. for us here. Now, right, at this point, after a super point. long flight at high latitude here on the COLA map, our navigational information pointing us to that waypoint via our INS here is going to be totally inaccurate. And if we flew directly to where the INS is telling us to go, it's gonna give us a really, really inaccurate fix and a bad update to our INS. So in order to counteract that and to be as precise as possible and to make this as easy as possible, let's actually navigate to that tack hand station via the navigational signals that it's sending out to our aircraft. So let's then take a look at our map here and look up the TACAN frequency for Banach Airport. It's going to be channel 47. And always keep in mind, guys, that when you see a TACAN station and it doesn't specify an X-ray or Yankee band, always assume it's an X-ray band. So back to our cockpit here. We're going to go ahead and take command of our TACAN receiver. We're going to turn it on by bringing it to the transmit and receive position. And we'll pop in 47 X-ray. Then we're going to specify our ADI and our HSI to give us navigational info from our TACAN receiver. And to make things a little bit easier for us, why don't we turn on our flight director? And we can see here that we're getting nav information letting us know that our TACAN is at about 030 degrees. So let's go ahead and pop our autopilot off. And we'll just turn and start flying on over to the TACAN station at Banach Airfield for our INS update. One thing to keep in mind here, of course, is as we're flying to Banach Airport, Banach is kind of in the middle of a valley, so we may lose line of sight to the TACAN station, so we may lose our navigational signals to it here, but we should pick it up again as we get closer. 
we'll go ahead and roll out. So it looks like we're inbound on the one or the 220 degree radial to the Banak Takhan station. And why don't we center up our CDI here, make things a little bit easier for us to navigate precisely to that Takhan station. And yeah, it looks like we're right on the, the uh, 220 radial inbound to the Takhan station. So that's perfect. And we'll set our heading bug up here to recenter our flight director. And that way we can navigate as precisely and easily as possible. And there we go. That's the call out from Jester letting us know that we're very close to the VIP. So we're just going to make sure our autopilot is back off again. And we're just going to be as precise as possible flying directly to and then right over the Tachyon station. Now these clouds are a little bit cold, so let's make sure we get our engine anti-ice on. All right. Five miles to VIP. Make sure you fly directly over it. Keeping an eye here, trying to do the best job we possibly can. And of course, the closer we get to the Tachyon station, the harder it's going to be to really fly directly over the top of it because the navigational signals are going to get pretty darn sensitive. Getting closer. There we go. Now it's starting to flip, so we're just going to roll out. Sweet. INS updated. And boom, our INS is updated because we flew directly right over the top of that Tachyon station. And we can see there that the navigational systems in the back seat are agnostic to the nav navigational signals we're actually using in our front seat here to fly the aircraft. So even though we're navigating via tack end signals in the front seat to fly the jet, Jester in the back seat or your human Wizzo in the back seat can update the INS and play with the INS waypoints, no problem back there. So I hope this gives you guys a much easier and far more precise technique for updating the INS in the F4 and getting you guys on time, on target, in all weather. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. And uh, fly safe out there and enjoy this beautiful game as always.